we are going to talk about Typer. This is a command line uh, library for building command line applications. I'm going to show you a lot of code. So first, who am I? I'm Sebastian Ramirez. I uh, live in Berlin, Germany, but I am actually from Colombia. That's why the accent. Uh, you can find me on the online everywhere. Uh, I work for this company, Forethought, that is dedicated to uh, doing machine learning for the customer experience uh, area. I also work as an external consultant with our companies, and I created a bunch of open source libraries that have been used by some companies. Uh, now we're going to talk about Typer, which is this library for building command line the interface applications. Uh, it currently has a bunch of GitHub stars, and it's uh, the little sibling of FastAPI, which is like the project that I uh, created for building web APIs that is like a little bit bigger. Uh, and internally, this is powered by Click, is the thing that does all the work for uh, the command line applications. Now, what is a command line interface? Uh, in case that, that sounds weird, uh, it's uh, these screens that look like a hacker window, that's a command line, or that's a terminal or a shell. Uh, like, we can use the terms interchangeably. You normally write some command, and then the computer does something, and the computer shows some output. And this is what uh, developers tend to use a lot, uh, and use tools that are written to be, using, uh, to be used in these uh, terminals. What I'm going to show you is how to build one of these tools using Typer to be used in one of these terminals. So we will start with Python. This is just pure Python using type annotations. Uh, so now let me see if I can use the laser. Yeah. So here we are declaring that this name, this is a variable, and this variable name will be of type string. I'm just showing you why use type annotations. We are still not building a command line application. We are just seeing why type annotations. We are saying this name is a string. And we are saying that the age is an integer that by default is none. This optional means it can be none. Optional is all actually nonable. That what should be the name. Uh, and then we just like use the variables internally, and we just print some stuff. So this is just a normal Python function. And then if we call it, if we call the function directly, we pass an argument here for the name, then it just shows the output that we thought it would show, hello, Peter. And if we pass keyword arguments, a name and an age, it will show the output uh, that we just were printing. So this is just how it works. Now, why would we want to use type annotations? The first thing is the editor, where we write the code, will be able to detect if we make mistakes. So now. Let's say that we don't want to just print the age. We want to see if the age is above 18. If we write this code like that, the editor is going to be able to show us this little red squiggly line here that is showing, hey, there's an error here. And if we just put the mouse on top of that, the editor is going to be able to tell us, hey, you cannot try to sum a, an integer that could be none. You cannot compare it with another integer because this thing could be none. We say here that, hey, this thing could actually be none. It's not always an integer. So uh, the editor is preventing us from making a mistake and making a bug that we will have to execute the code to see that there's an error. The editor is telling us right away, hey, your code is wrong. This is what you need to do to fix it. This is why we will want to use uh, type annotations to get those features from the editor. The other reason is that uh, type annotations are what provides completion, auto-completion in the editor. When you are writing code, let's say that we are taking the name and we want to make it uppercase. I have terrible memory. I never remember how is it that you convert a string to an uppercase, but if I type name dot and I start trying to see stuff, the editor is going to tell me, hey, the method that you can use is capitalized and it's going to show me this menu that I can click or I can just hit enter and I will just have auto-completion there. And then I can just use it. So this is what provides auto-completion, the type annotations. Now, uh, let's go back to the whole function. This is just normal Python with type annotations. Now, let's convert this to a command line interface application. So we just put import typer. And then we are just calling typer.run. And we pass the function that has those type annotations. And that's it. Now, we can run it. We have the same code that we had before. And we can run it in the command line. And we can say Python main.py, and this is now a command line application. Uh, we are passing an argument here. This is going to be the name. And then this is going to just show, you, show us, uh, hello, hello, Peter. Uh, uh, now, why is this main block here? This is just to allow us to use this file in other places so that this file doesn't have to be only a command line. We could also import it in some other pieces of the code. And whenever we import this code, 
just by importing it, it won't execute and print stuff on the screen because we have this main block here. If you want to learn more about this, it's also in the documentation. I will continue because there's not much time for all I want to show you. Now, let's say that we have required arguments that are missing. So we are not passing the name here. We're just saying Python main.py, but we didn't say what is the name. Then typer will automatically show us a nice error telling us, hey, you have a missing argument name. And we also get an automatic help uh, option, and we can pass it with this. We can just, this is the same code. We, we didn't, like, we haven't changed anything in the code. We automatically get this help option. So we can say Python main dash dash help, and we get all the information. What are the possible arguments? Well, the required arguments. What are the possible options, et cetera. Uh, we also have uh, options, command line options. So this thing that has a default value, Typer automatically converts it to one option. So we can say dash dash age and put what is the uh, integer that we're going to receive there. Typer will, of course, convert this. This, is, this comes in the command line as a string. But Typer will convert it to an integer because that's what we say that we wanted here. We wanted an integer. So Typer will make sure that we actually get an integer inside of the code. And then we can just like use it, and it will execute the code that uh, we will expect it to execute. If we don't pass this age, then this variable will have by default the default value none. But if we pass a number, then this variable will have this number 193. If we pass invalid data, we also get automatic data validation. If we say the age is old, this is not a number, and then we get a nice error telling us, hey, age is not a valid integer. We cannot compute with this. Now let's say that we want the command and application to have more help, more information for the users. We can just put this in a doc string, and this is how you will also document a function, a normal function. So this is still just a normal Python function the same way that you will write it. The only thing that we are adding for making it uh, as command line application is this import typer and typer.run. And now if we go to the dash dash help, we can see that the same doc string that we wrote inside of the function is shown here on the screen and is giving us like all the information that we added and that we wanted to show the users how this thing works. Now we can also add help for each one of the specific parameters. I won't show you, like I won't explain all this exactly because we don't have that much time, but we are saying this is still an argument, this is still required, and now we have this help information for the name. We are saying this age is still an optional integer that by default is none, this is still an option. So this is gonna be used with dash dash age, and we have this help information. Now, if we go to the command line, if we check, now we have the help information here. For the name, it says the name of the user and age is the age of the user, which is the information that we passed when creating the command line application. Now, let's say that uh, we can also create a full typer application with, to get all the features and everything. So we can just uh, create a typer app. So this is an instance of the class app. And then we can decorate the function. So we create this. We decorate the function with this app.command. And then instead of the saying typer.run here at the end, we are just calling that object as if it was a function. We are just like calling it directly. And this is going to do the same. All this that I'm showing you is the same that typer.run is doing underneath when you do it. So typer.run is just a shortcut to doing all this stuff. But the thing is that when we do it like this, very explicitly and very intentionally to create a typer command line application, we can get like uh, benefits. For example, we can create an actual command line program that we can run from the command line directly. Now we are not saying Python, main.py, something like that. We just created a new package that is called SuperGrid, and we can give it to our users for them to install it and to use it directly, and they have like all the help and all the information and all the stuff. And here's the nice thing. With Typer, uh, your users will get automatic uh, scripts to install completion for them in their terminal. And the way that, that they do it is that they can just call that uh, uh, install completion option that is created automatically. You don't have to do anything for that. And then we, they will have completion in the shell. And this works for C shell, bash, fish, PowerShell, so everything, even PowerShell, which is very difficult to do. Uh, now, the way that you use completion is that you start typing the command that we just created, the program, super great, blah, blah, blah. And we say, this is the name, Logan. We type dash, dash, because that's the start of the option that we want to use, and we just hit tab in the keyboard. And then the terminal and this program, and like all the setup for this automatic completion, will give us what are the options that I can use. So it will show age, install completion, show completion, and with the help for each one of those. If we keep hitting tab, we'll go to each one, and then we can keep hitting tab, 
or press the arrow keys, and it will show us what are the options that we can select. So we can use a command and application, but more interactively, and get out of completion right there. This is very useful for developers because it improves the developer experience and the productivity and the enjoyment of the tools that are uh, used with this. So then we can just select age, and then we can just put what is the age that we want to use, and uh, the, the auto completion, the shell completion, or tab completion, or however you want to call it, is going to help a lot the users. So on one side, when we are building an application, we get a lot of auto completion in the editor, just because we are using the type annotations. But on the other side, the final users are also getting auto completion with the application that we built for them. And you don't have to write any custom code for this auto completion to work. You don't have to do anything special. It will extract all the information from those type annotations and those functions that you created automatically. Uh, this auto completion works by default. It works in even by deeply nested <laughs> commands that I'm not showing you commands. Uh, uh, it also works with command line options, arguments, even works for custom data. So you don't have to uh, hard code what are the possible options or what are the values. You can get out the completion from stuff that is remote. So you can say like, hey, I want to use the, I don't know, I want to buy this item, but like what is the item that I want to buy? You can hit tab and that can trigger some call to an API and you can show a spinner and that will fetch what is the possible items that you can buy and get show them to your user right there, live, in the terminal. Uh, you can do all that with, uh, with Hyper, and it's like there's a lot of tutorials and a lot of information of how to achieve these things. Now, you can also have multiple commands. Right now, we have only been using SuperGrid and just that. But you can actually create multiple subcommands for your application. So uh, we can just decorate one function, the same as we did before, now we are have this high command here. And we can decorate another one that is called by. Now we uh, typer will create these two sub commands for us. We will have by, high, and we will have by. If we go to the help option, we will see that now we have commands here. And each of these commands has the information that we wrote in the doc string for each one of those functions. So we can see that this is to say bye to the user, this is to greet the user. Now let's see, let's see again this high command. This has this doc string, and it just prints the name. It just takes the names and, and prints the name. Uh, and if we check the help for that sub command, so each one of those sub commands also gets their own help. So we can see that uh, we, uh, we have the information of the doc string with the user. And we also have the information of where are the arguments and where are the things that we have here. So name is a text that by default is known, but this is required. It's probably difficult to see here because of the light. But we get the information of what is the what are the information that we need to pass for this specific sub command. And this is of course generated automatically. And if we call it, then like it will just work as expected. So this is the program that we created. This is the application, the command line application. This is the sub command hi. And this is the argument that we are passing, which is just Peter. And then it just like will say hi Peter. The same for by for the command that we created that is called by. It just has another doc string. We have some parameters here. And now see that we have this formal. And formal is a Boolean. We add the type annotation saying that this is a Boolean. And that by default, this is false. So typer will make sure to convert it a Boolean flag that we can use directly. And if we go and check the documentation and the help now, we can see that we have the help here. We can even use emojis or whatever. Uh, we have the name that is required. And we have formal, which is now this Boolean thing that we can use, that has the alternative no formal that we can uh, also use if, uh, if we want. So Typer automatically creates what are the two variants. And of course, we can customize all that. But the thing is that by default, it will just work. We just add the type annotations, and it will just do the thing that we would want it to do. And there are a bunch of other type of features that we probably wouldn't have the time to cover. I think actually I was able to do this on time. I think it's probably the first time. Uh, there's a Boolean flags. The, you can also customize it to say formal, not formal, or even just to not mention what are this is the other option, or customize what is the text for no formal. So you could say formal, and the alternative is casual or something. Uh, there are also prompts. So you can ask information from the user. You can ask for passwords and it won't show the password uh, there, right there on the, on the screen. 
all this is all this all the information and all the all the work is actually done by Click. Click is the library that is doing all the work underneath, which is like the most popular library for building command line applications. It's just that Click was built before there were type annotations, so it didn't have a way to exploit all these all these features and to make it so easy to work with. But Click is still the thing that is doing all the work underneath. Uh, you can also launch apps from the from the command line, so you could say. Uh, I don't know, super grid login, and it will start a browser with a URL and like do the whole thing. Uh, there's tools for improving and for, for facilitating easy testing, and a bunch of other features. For example, there's also easy, well, it's not really integration, but uh, because you don't really need to integrate anything to use other libraries with Typer, but you can, for example, use Rich to generate beautiful uh, information and display beautiful information on the command line, and you can combine Rich with Typer to create beautiful command line applications that people would love. There's a lot of information of how to integrate Typer with Rich also in the documentation for Typer because, uh, yeah, I don't know, I prefer to explain and teach how to use other libraries and other things instead of just like wrapping in them and like duplicating uh, the work. But the thing is that if you want to build a quick script, Typer can help you a lot. And if you want to build a full blown command line interface application, you can also use Typer to go as deep as you need. Uh, I don't know if we have like two minutes for questions. That, that's cool. Uh, you can check the documentation. It's here in typer.tingle.com. And you can find me on the webs and like all the stuff. I'm also going to be around if you want to ask questions later or whatever. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I do think we actually have time for one question, Sebastian. Yep. That was really insightful. Do we have any questions from any of our audience members? We have one minute and 40 seconds for that question. <laughs> or otherwise, we can also talk outside. So I actually can ask you then a question. For people that are sitting here that haven't yet tried Typer, where can they go to get started? How can they jump in? What kind of words of advice would you give them? Uh, there are a lot of online courses to learn Python. Python is currently one of the, well, by several ranks, is currently the most popular programming language. Of course, that's like, that varies and like depending on how you evaluate it. But Python, the thing with Python is that it's like writing English, but in a very strict way, and it just works. So it's like writing pseudo code. It's like, oh, I would like to talk in English to the computer, and that is Python, and then it runs. So it's very easy to get working on that. And Python is the, the programming language that you will use for machine learning, for artificial intelligence, and for all these things, uh, for data science. So uh, there, there's a lot of things that you can do with Python. Uh, you can start with the, with the same tutorials in the documentation. There are many, many, many courses online. There are many that are even free. And if you want to build command line interface applications, for example, the documentation for Typer is made to be as a tutorial that you can just go in and learn not just about Typer, but learn about command line applications and what does that mean and how they work and like what would you want to use it and like how, how to do the whole thing. If you want to learn how to build web APIs, for example, you can go to FastAPI, which is that other library uh, that I created. And like the documentation is also uh, written as a tutorial so that you can learn. If you know the basics of Python that you can get in any of these online tutorials, then you can learn a lot about web APIs from uh, that one. Two seconds, and we are done. <laughs> Thank Impeccable you timing. Thank you so much. Thank Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a round of applause for Sebastian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.